Hi, thanks for joining me. Today I've got a problem from an A-level maths past paper and this question lots of students struggled to solve and I think this is a really interesting problem. When I first saw this it took me an extra couple of seconds to think about how we had to solve this. I think it's a really really cool problem. So we have a circle which has equation x squared plus y squared minus 6x minus 8y equals p and we're told that the circle intersects the coordinate axes at exactly three points and from this we want to find the two possible values of p. And this here is a small extract from the examiner's report which says that this question proved the most discriminating part. So this is actually part B of the question um, with very few students able to obtain the two correct values of P. And there's more to this but I didn't in include it. I thought that was the most interesting part that very few students were able to solve this. If you want to have a go at this problem pause the video now but I'm going to dive straight into a solution here. What we're going to do is the standard thing to begin with and we're going to write this in the kind of standard form for the equation of a circle so we're going to complete the square so we get x minus 3 squared minus 9 plus y minus 4 squared minus 16 equals p and then bringing everything onto one side we get x minus 3 squared plus y minus 4 squared equals p plus 25. so there's our circle the center is uh, 3 4 and the radius is root p plus 25 oops cool so so far pretty standard now because we want this circle to intersect the coordinate axes exactly three times we all if we just visually think about any circle most circles will intersect the coordinate axes four times like we have here so one two three four or potentially we could have just intersecting twice so if the circle is like kind of entirely on one side or kind of entirely one side here um, and then we realize ah if we want it to be exactly three points of intersection we probably need it to be a tangent to one of the axes so we get that here and now this is the approach that most students took they said okay well if we want it to be a tangent to the y-axis we sub in x equals zero and then make the discriminant zero and then if we want the x-axis to be a tangent we make y equal to zero in this equation and then set the discriminant of that resulting equation to zero however that doesn't quite work here and that's because well we the best thing to do to see this is to draw a sketch of what we have so our circle has a center three four that is fixed that is independent of p so let's draw on mark roughly where that is so if i make three roughly there and four roughly there the center of our circle is maybe there it doesn't have to be perfectly to scale and so by all means definitely we could make the x-axis the uh, you know a tangent and it would look something like this our circle okay that's, that's really horribly drawn but maybe something more like that anyway it's clearly going to intersect three times once here once here and once here and so that works however the issue is not with that it's with what if we make the y-axis a tangent well then we get our circle looking like that and then there's only one point of intersection because this distance of course is four and if we make the y-axis a tangent that distance there is only three the radius would be three and so this wouldn't even come into contact with the x-axis so how do we solve this well let's firstly deal with the case when the x-axis is the tangent so i'll get rid of this picture for the time being so when the x-axis is the tangent we set y equal to zero and if we sub this in here we just get x squared minus 6x equals p or minus p equals zero and we make the discriminant of this guy zero so the discriminant here is 6 squared so this 30, 36 minus 4 times 1 times minus p or in other words 36 plus 4p and if you make that zero that just tells us that p equals minus 9. so that there is one of our solutions for p now the question is how do we get another value of p here now the trick here is that if you want to have um three points of intersection you could have a tangent like we said or the other possibility is you get two for the price of one so one of your points of intersection is both an x-intercept and a y-intercept so our circle passes through the origin something like this and we'd have an intercept there an intercept there and an intercept there and that's crucial to this problem so the other possibility here to have exactly three points of intersection is if it passes through the origin which of course is zero zero and if we sub that in here we get zero squared plus zero squared minus zero minus zero equals p so in other words p equals zero 
and that is our other solution to this problem. So either p is negative 9 or p equals 0. Those are our two solutions for this problem. Thank you so much for watching. If you have got your A-levels around the corner, best of luck for you in those, and I will catch you in the next one. Have a great day.